Hey everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. As you can see, it is a bit of a rainy day again here in Sofa Land. That being said, the storms have held off long enough for us to do a Brent Christensen update. So, his father finally took the stand and there were some interesting things uh, laid on the line. So, without further ado, let's review. As I stated, Brent Christensen's father took the stand during the penalty phase of his trial. Now remember that he was found guilty, so that this is ne this is now a situation of life or death for him. Now Brent Christensen and both his father broke down in tears during Wednesday's testimony as his father pleaded with the jury to not take his life, citing that he has too much to offer. Another tidbit of information that I found interesting is last month during the guilt phase of the trial, his father was the only fam family member there. This obviously has caused his father a lot of anguish and issues going on with the thought of his son going to death. And while he was on the stand, he said, A couple of days ago, I had a flash of him on the table getting injected. He couldn't continue to think about it, and he said, I had to stop. I had to put it away. Now, regardless of whatever is going on, I mean, clearly, this is going to be very traumatic for the father. But this is one of those things where, you know, it's like, okay, I get the father didn't do anything here, you know, to harm the victim, obviously, except for having a son. But what his son has done is so vile. And not only that, it's like he continued the vileness. It would it wouldn't make it better or right or anything if he had showed some sorrow, but it would have been a lot better than the gloatfulness that he expressed over killing this young lady. So, you know, that right there, it, it makes it a hard pill to swallow when his father's up there talking about, oh, this is really traumatic for me, I can't imagine the thought of it, because also her parents are there, you know, during this trial, just a complete wreck. The father was asked if he had a message for Zong's family. I'm sorry my son was the one that caused your family pain, he said through tears. However, Zong's parents weren't in the courtroom to hear that. They had already left a few minutes earlier. Now, during the testimony with his father, he recounted a bunch of stuff from Brent's childhood. Obviously, they're going to try and bring stuff up like, you know, alcoholism and a rough life and things of this nature to spare him from the death penalty. So I'm just going to go over some of the stuff that he said. He said that Brent had a chaotic childhood. He had bouts of night terrors and nightmares that continued into adulthood. And he also had a bizarre kind of a suicide attempt at the age of 15 where he jumped off of a deck and tried to run into a moving car. Now, the father did try to bring up the mother's alcoholism and depression, and he said that oftentimes she would drink a quart of liquor a day, and they compared these to some of the issues that Brent was having with his own depression and alcoholism. Now, the defense has tried to use these as mitigating factors, such as, you know, the the alcohol, the, the, uh, the drug dependency, uh, alcoholism, mental health issues, all things of this nature, to exclude him from the death penalty. Also, testifying on Brent's behalf were a couple of his uncles, and they both basically testified to the fact that, yeah, there's like this long-running history of uh, addiction and mental health issues in the family. Now, one thing that could happen with this, if the jury comes back with a guilty verdict or the death penalty verdict, the judge still has to agree with that for him to get it. So that will be very interesting. A lot of times I think judges go with what the jury says, but you know, obviously things can switch. So one of the things, you know, with the, with the father, I was very interested to hear what the father had to say. And again, you know, I, I'm not trying to mitigate the fact that he could have some issues going on or whatever. I'm glad he apologized to their family. For me, it, it's just, it's a hard pill to swallow. His son has said and done so many horrible things and has expressed just such a hatred towards the world and people, and it seems to have all focused on Ying Ying Zhang and, and in turn her family. So I can't imagine that her family has much sympathy, and maybe they do, I don't know. You know I don't really, really want to speak for him. I guess I'm speaking for myself. I don't really have much sympathy, I should say for the father at this point. You know, my heart does go out to him a little bit because at the end of the day, that's his son. You know, I get that. But also, right now, for me, I'm still in the phase of 
I am comparing these two situations side by side, and I just can't have much sympathy for the situation that caused this situation, if that makes sense. This will be another one of those cases that would be interesting if there was a way, you know, once this is over with, if there's a way to find out more information about the dynamic between Brent's father and him himself, you know, what that relationship now looks like, and if Brent's father will ever come out and maybe do an interview or something of this nature, because I think one thing that happens with stuff like this is it's a natural public reaction to be curious, like, well, how did, how did Brent happen? You know, how did this happen? What made him, and a lot of people look to the parents you know, like for answers because they're like, well, you raised him. You know what I mean? Like well, what's going on here? And so I think some of the things such as that, that the alcoholism, you know, the addictions, mental health stuff, I, I mean, that's there. But again, a lot of people have those issues and a lot of people don't go do something horrendous like this. So I always say this, like addiction and things of this nature, that's just a symptom. There's underlying things going on there. And those are the things that kind of make me curious as to, well, what took place? Now, you know, obviously with his mother, you know, drinking a, a quart of liquor a day and all the stuff that probably went along with that, okay, well, that could be part of it. I'm not trying to say that that mitigates the circumstances whatsoever. Uh, because, again, a lot of people have that. I had friends who had mothers like that, and I can assure you they are from the opposite end of Brent. They're very successful human beings, and they had a torrid childhood. And so, you know, I get everybody's different. But another thing that take all of that out of the ass, take all that out, my whole aspect is what is his fascination with death and why was he so turned on by the serial killer thing and just, you know, I even after he killed this young lady, gloating and bragging about it, that's where I'm like, what, where did that come from? And I'm not trying to blame his father and mother for that and saying that. I mean, I'm genuinely curious, like, where... You know, that's the part of these cases that fascinates me. Why is that such a thing for Brent? Why did he enjoy that? You know, how do, I would love, I wish we could have seen this case to have seen his facial expressions, things of this nature, because as you heard, they're kind of talking about, you know, he's usually very stoic, and this is the first time I guess he's, well, no, he did tr uh, allegedly cry yesterday when her father, Ying Ying Zhang's father spoke. You know, today he cried when his father spoke. So, yeah, but I guess other than that, he's kind of sat there with this very stoic expression, which is most of the time what the defendants are probably told to do anyways. Uh, so uh, this is just one of those cases that I'm like, I would love to know the psychology behind it because this is one of the reasons that just keeps me really intrigued with these cases. So hopefully today, so I'm recording this on Thursday, hopefully today they'll come back with a verdict and we'll be able to say that. I can't imagine it's going to take them that long to come up with a verdict with this. I feel like some of these cases like this where the, the guilt is known, you know, it's not a question he did this I, I feel like it's a little easier to come back with a guilty verdict or a not guilty you know not a guilty verdict I'm sorry you know death penalty or life or whatever the case may be so anyways that is it I hope everyone's doing well uh, we're gonna round this video out until the next one now don't forget if you want to know when my videos come out you got to click the bell for it to alert you to all the notifications so that you know when it's time to hang out on the sofa lots of stuff is down in the description if you want to follow me on social media check out other podcasts uh, and, and things of that nature. So I appreciate you choosing to spend time with me and we will talk in another little bit.